<coughs> Hello everyone, today I'm getting the cover on this. I've got a mate coming down to help me because we need to stretch the cover across the top and you need two pairs of hands for that. But I'm gonna quickly just go over some of the things I've done which will protect the cover, and make it last longer, many years longer. So I'll quickly go over that and then we'll start getting the cover on. So protecting the cover is all about literally protecting the frame. You put this anti-hotspot tape on and here on this corner piece, I always put two on. Recommended putting it on the front face there and on the side face because the cover will wrap around it. Up here where these end tubes meet, you put uh, tape around these and tape over all the brackets and fittings that the cover may or may not touch. And the main reason is because metal heats up in the summer and touches the plastic and degrades it slowly over time. So you need to make sure all these bits are covered so that you don't get any degradation in the plastic. Down on the corners of the timbers on the base rail, you can see I've just cut the corners off just to ease that because they were pointy and jaggy. So just ease that. And I'm now going to tape over that. So I've just taken the rough bit off this corner and now I just want to protect that slightly with a little bit of tape just to ease it further. And that will help the cover just slide over it as I fix it underneath. The other four corners are done. So this anti-hotspot tape wants to go down the centre of the outside of the tube to protect the plastic and it seems like it's not very sticky at all but it is if you force it on and once you've got it on force out the edges as well make sure they're stuck because they will lift later but you want to make sure that they're stuck when you're actually putting the plastic on and this actually aids you putting the plastic on the plastic will slide over the top of this nice and easy just trim it off so it's the 28th of march today and yesterday we had a dry window there was no rain yesterday a little bit of sunshine but it was still too cool really it was uh, seven degrees yesterday but we took the opportunity whilst it was dry to get this cover roughly on and i do mean roughly and over the next couple of weeks we've got more rain forecast which means i wouldn't have been able to start this really until probably somewhere between the first and second week of april and it was just dragged on even longer so we took the opportunity to get it on and i'll show you exactly what we've done so far and over the next two weeks in between showers it's raining now only lightly but it was peeing down a minute ago i'll do a few more little bits the fact that it's on now and once the rain showers part over the next two weeks and the sun comes out which will happen it will very quickly warm up in there and I'll be able to stretch the plastic and start getting it into its final position and start doing a bit more to it. But as I say, I need to do a bit more work on it today just to finish it off what we started yesterday. And then over the next couple of weeks, um, get it finished off really. I mean, it's going to be into April before you actually see this video now. But this is as far as we've got now. So while it was dry yesterday, we got the cover over the tunnel, centralized it both end to end and side to side. And then we battened it at the other end above the door, where you can see up here, I've got another batten. And then my friend who was here to help, grabbed hold of a handful and jumped inside the polytunnel and put all his weight on it to pull it tight over the end whilst I nailed this in here. And you can see this batten has only got three nails in at the moment. We need to pull this extra bit tight as well. And then I can fully nail this batten on and then cut down for the doorway. On the side of the tunnel, we put a couple of battens on and one starts just down there and it runs the length 
just down the middle of the tunnel, almost to the end, down there, just to give us some tension side to side. And that's enough for now, or that was certainly enough for overnight. And the rest we just tucked in and we weighted down with some bricks. But we say we need to finish it off. And this baton at the other end, again, that's just got the three nails in holding that in, which again allows us just to tighten this rest of this, this plastic up here, pull it around and tighten it. Now, when I put these outer battens on, it's so that the cover can come round, be pulled tight, and then this baton will fit in here and hold it in place and you nail it on to hold the cover on and then you trim off the extra plastic. But as it's not warm enough, I've actually folded the plastic in and cut just straight down the middle here to separate it. It's actually not all the way up to here, it's about six inches lower, so I've got room to adjust later. And I'll show you what I've got and how I fixed it inside for now. Now, all the other battens around on the outside have all been nailed and at the top of the door on the outside. But this one here has been screwed because it's just there as a temporary measure. It's just holding the plastic back so it doesn't flap around in the wind. And then later on, I can take that off, unscrew it and just take it off easier. If it's nailed on, you're getting into all kinds of a mess. And this just holds it in here. So, excuse that noise, it's a bit of tin. We've got the base rail all the way round at the base and it's not fixed at this bottom part yet because this all involves tightening all this plastic around which will give this up here some rigidity. There is some tension in there now but by pulling the plastic down and over with this base rail it will give it some more. Let me show you what I mean. So down here on the base rail, we've got these two bolts going through this big piece of wood, which is on the outside of the polytunnel frame. And then the batten, and then the batten that actually holds the plastic to it. But this whole system, this clamp, and these two bolts going through the wood, are actually loose on this polytunnel frame. And if I just loose, actually if I just mark that first, I'll put a felt tip mark around there which is directly on the polytunnel hoop. If I now loosen these off a bit, so that's now not tight onto the polytunnel frame. What you can do is you later stand on it and you can see the movement in there that's half an inch, but later on, as the plastic warms up later through the year, you can tighten all the way around and keep tightening. I mean, I can get an inch there now and it starts to tension up this plastic. So that's how you get your tension in on a warm, sunny day. So using the combination of pulling this plastic round to take away this bagginess and knocking the side rails down, will get this cover nice and tight all over and then it should be able to flick it and make the sound of drums <laughs> now as part of the kit you get supplied when you buy a first tunnel tunnel you get a load of these nails to fix these battens and these battens are what fix the plastic to the framework around the door and that's always been the standard and that's fine and to work great and me and a friend stretched it end to end and we put that in but we didn't have much time that day and we couldn't continue doing the job. And since then I've had nobody down here to help because normally what happens is you pull these around at the end and fix them and one person will pull and the other person fixes so that you can get the tightness that you need. So I just cut it down the middle, folded it around on the inside and used one of these battens to screw it to the inside of the post just to stop the wind blowing it away. <laughs> until we could start the job again basically uh, and the weather was favourable because the next day and for about a week it was raining. So anyway I took the battens off and then I got talking with JB online from Naturally JB uh, about is it not a job you can do on your own and I, it got me to thinking so I took this batten off 
And because it's already tight up here, the plastic, I screwed this in at the top using screws instead of nails. I used screws on the inside so I could get it off easy. And I found that I could pull a bit at a time and then screw this batten in. So it is something that you can do on your own if you want to. Just take your time. I mean, I've put four or five screws in there so far and I've got the bottom bits to do all the way around. And that's what I'm going to finish off today. But if you make a mistake, if it's not quite tight enough, you can just release the screw, pull it through a little bit more and put the screw back in. And it's, it's as simple as that. So that bit can be done on your own. <laughs> so this is how I've been pulling it tight around the door frames. Started at the top, I knew it was tight at the top with the pattern that goes over the top. Screwed it in roughly, and then I've been working my way down and all I'm doing is pulling this plastic. I've got a screw that started here. So I'm pulling this tight. At the same time, pushing the pattern with my thumb into position and now I can just screw that home and that's tight enough down there and then just working my way down this pattern tightening it all up as I go along and then we'll get to the finished bit at the bottom so with all the plastic on now it's all gathered in around the door frames and battened on it's all battened on down the sides and it's been pulled tight as tight as I can get it for the heat we've got this time of year in a couple of months time when we're in the middle of summer and one of those days it's almost unbearable to be in the tunnel because it's so hot that's the day to go back and re-tighten again to make sure it is really really tight so for now that's done and I'm now mounting the doors and I fitted this yesterday this is the sliding door frame I've got it on at the other end as well and the doors on I just need to fit the door to this and I'm going to show you the end detail to show you how that fitted on and then we'll crack on and get this door on and then essentially apart from a bit of tidying up uh, and then starting to dig it over in there this tunnel is done <laughs> so at the end of this door frame support you can make out the cavities that are in here and I've got a bolt here and if I pop that in there so that you can see it that's how that goes that bolt but in that end area there so it will then go through the door frame and if we go inside and see where these bolts come out you can see along here these bolts have just had a washer put on and a nut on top and it's been tightened up and that is what is supporting the door sliding mechanism fitting the runners to the doors is nice and easy there's a bracket that you screw on five millimeters from this edge and it goes on 10 centimeters from the edge of the door you can see there's a little slot in there which is where this nut and bolt assembly go on and you just tighten these up and later I'll, I won't do it now but I'll do it with a spanner later make sure it's nice and tight then this door uh, runner you simply twist on there we go job done so with those runners on now offer it up the sliding part of the door slip this runner in <laughs> keeps wanting to come out run it along get the second one in there we go sliding door fitted now apart from putting some other hardware on this there's a drop spike to go on this door in its final position there's door stops to put on at either end so it doesn't go too far that is it, the tunnel is now finished. <laughs> Gosh, am I pleased. I'd like to take a minute just to say thank you again to First Tunnels for sponsoring me with this tunnel. They've supplied this free of charge and in return, I've made all these videos about me putting it up, which I think is a fair enough thing. I mean, my old tunnel was completely knackered. Uh, could have got it to go on for another year or two but I made the inquiry got the tunnel and then I've put the tunnel up now in regards to work if you're starting with a level site if you get your site level first and you're starting from a level site 
and if you can work sort of six, seven, eight hours in a day, you'll easily get this job completed in a week. It's taken me a couple of months because I've been doing it through the wrong weather, basically. Uh, and I've been having to wait for weather to clear, ground to free, uh, to defrost, uh, ground to dry out, uh, the right temperatures to put the plastic on. Everything has been against me in this, but I've just soldiered on and done it as I've been able to. And I've now got the whole playlist of the videos start to finish, which is great. Um, now I can get on. I've got a bit more DIY to do along this side where I want to put another temporary type permanent bench like I had in the old tunnel. Uh, I'm going to put one of those down this edge and I need to dig it over. Um, I've got all the flagstones there which for now I'm going to use as a pathway. My full intention with this tunnel is to make it completely no dig so that will be compost beds and um, chipped wood pathways and I've got some chip wood coming. I've got a trailer full coming in the next wee while so I'll be looking to do that as soon as possible but given that I'll probably have planted this up before I get that um, then it's a case of um, probably be autumn that I get that initiated and get the compost for it so but that's the long-term plan is to make it completely no dig this tunnel because there'll just be straight beds and straight pathways through and that should make life easier so I hope you uh, enjoy this. I hope you got something from it. I know it's packed full of hints and tips. I know it's it's gone on for quite some time, but there's a lot of information in in this whole playlist that this video is now in. But that's it for now. This tunnel is done, and I'm mega pleased because it means you know we're in the first first week of April now. I can get on with gardening. <laughs> which is the whole reason for putting this tunnel up so I'm really looking forward to that now getting dug over and getting prepared for plants anyway that's it for this video look after yourselves everyone please stay safe and I'll see you all very very soon Tarana. <laughs>